You're listening to the Natalie Parker Studio Podcast, episode number 15. In today's episode, we're discussing what to do when you hit that awkward, messy middle part in your work and you're not sure what to do next. I can't wait to unpack this with you in this episode. Welcome to the Natalie Parker Studio Podcast, the podcast for women artists who are ready to pursue their creative dreams so that they can thrive both in life and in business. I'm your host, Natalie Parker, artist and mentor to women creatives around the globe. In this podcast, I'll share with you the strategies, principles and mindset that you need to build a purposeful and fulfilling creative business. If you're ready to be inspired, encouraged and equipped to build the art business of your dreams, then you're absolutely in the right place. Let's dive in to today's episode. Well, hey there artist and welcome to the show. I'm so excited to chat with you today about this topic. That awkward, messy middle that we hit when we're working through our work and we're not sure what to do next. Now this topic was requested by one of our amazing artists inside our Confident Brush community, Mel Townsend, whose Instagram is at Melanie Townsend Artist. Now she also recently left this beautiful review over on the podcast where she said, inspirational, aspirational, and so encouraging. This podcast is a beautiful gift to artists on their creative journey inspirational and aspirational, Natalie has done the hard yards to build a successful creative career and generously shares here all the golden nuggets that she has learned on her path in her mission to help guide, encourage and uplift others. A must listen for all creatives and Mel, reading that was so heartwarming. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Now these podcast reviews are fantastic ways for other artists like you to see that this podcast exists and to get the help that they need in their creative journey. We can all do with a bit of support and a bit of encouragement, right? So head on over to ratethispodcast.com forward slash Natalie Parker. I've made it super simple for you. You can even just hit the link in the show notes below. It'll take you step by step through the process of how to leave that review for us. Okay, so before we jump into today's topic, we kind of need to unpack why this problem exists. Okay, so we're going to hit what we call the awkward, the messy middle, we get stuck, whatever you want to call it, this part when it comes in our creation process. Now, personally, I don't have a fear of the blank canvas like I used to. I'm very good at starting a project so I can go and bang out a whole lot of canvases, you know, get them all started. But then we get to that part where we're like, what to do next? And this comes up a lot for artists. And there's a reason that this problem exists, okay? First of all, I want you to know that getting to that messy middle, getting stuck, not too sure of what to do next, this is a common challenge for all artists. So you are not alone. Don't think that you, you know, that you're not doing well enough, that you should know what to do. This is normal, okay? Now, the reason that this occurs, and there can be a few reasons, the main reason it occurs is because We don't have all the information. So putting an artwork together or putting an effective composition together is putting a whole lot of puzzle pieces together like a jigsaw puzzle. Now the reason you're getting stuck in that messy middle is because you don't know what to do or what art principle, what element to bring into place to solve that particular problem. Another reason you get stuck is because you fear overworking your work. Okay, so sometimes we get to that messy middle and there's two ways we can go. One, we can just pause and pop it to the side and almost procrastinate and just feel like I don't even know where to go. You know, I'm not a good artist. And then we start to go in this little spiral. 
The other thing that can happen is we're like, I've got to get this work done. This is me. I've got to get this work done. I was working on one painting at a time. I've got to finish it. I've got to solve the problem. I've got to target. So what would happen would be I'd keep push, 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 keep working the work, overworking it, putting one layer in and then it wasn't balancing with the other layer. And then you end up overworking your work and then you end up with a mess at the end. Now, as you progress through your creative practice, you will become stuck less in that messy middle part less often. Okay, so this is good news for you. It does come up, of course it does, but when you are progressing in your career, you'll find that the problems that you're trying to solve in your work become a little bit more complicated but you have that understanding of the art principles, the techniques, the skills. You may have had, had a particular problem in your work before, so you're going to know how to solve it. Okay, so I just wanted to give you that encouragement first. One, it's common. It is incredibly common for all artists, regardless of where they are in their creative seasons, to get stuck or, I guess, challenged in their work. The further you go in your creative practice, the more knowledge you have through spending time in your studio, learning art principles, learning art techniques, the more tools you have in your image bank, in your skill bank to use to solve that problem to move forward. So with that said, here are six of my top ways that I personally use to move through that messy middle part. The first one is to get the information. So what I mean by that is when you understand art principles and elements, so things like you know light and dark, contrast, texture, balance, you're going to be able to diagnose, for better word, the problem that is happening in your painting. So we can get all started, we've got some layers down, we've got some colors, we've got some composition, we've got some patterns and some designs going in there. When you have the understanding of those art elements and principles, you can see what is working and what is not working. Okay, so the reason, for better word, of why you are stuck. Now, the reason that you're getting there at the moment, depending on where you're in your creative path, especially if you're a passionate or a trainee or even emerging artist, and I'll show you later on how you can identify which season that you are in, you're not sure what to do because you don't have all that information, okay, and that is okay. So your first thing is you actually need to get that info. You need to start learning and investing in your art career and getting those basic art principles and elements understood. Now, there are, of course, many ways you can do this. Sometimes it happens organically, okay? And what I mean by that is when you're in your studio, I have one fantastic student who did a 100-day painting challenge. Now, in that time, I saw her solve so many issues, okay? She's got her work to the point where it has now her own style, whether she's realized that or not, because she's put that time in in the studio, figuring things out every day, she's become a lot more skilled in her use of art principles and elements. So one is just go into your studio and spend time working through your work. The other one is to go and start to study those art making principles. And that is what I teach inside the Confident Brush. The other way you can do it is you can obviously learn from other artists, you can look at their composition, you can start to analyze it, you can do research, but there's nothing like actually physically getting in your studio and doing the work and learning. So what's happening at the moment, if you're in this messy middle part, you're looking at your work and it's a jigsaw puzzle and you're trying to figure out why is this not working? And the thing, that's a good thing, you know, because I feel as artists, sometimes we're like, oh, I should know the answer. But the fact that you can look at an artwork and go, it's not working. And then you might have like your spouse or someone in your family 
they might come along and they might say something like, it's great, it's working. And you and you know in your heart of hearts that it is wrong. And you can't understand. You're like, why are you just stroking my ego? Why are you just saying it's working? It's not working. I'm so frustrated. This is the conversations I've had with my husband where, you know, he's like, oh, this looks good, hun. Bless him. He'll always say it looks good. But anywho, Mick, you know that it's not working. You know why? Because you're an artist. That's right. You're an artist. And you know what artists have? They have a good aesthetic eye. You know what looks good and what doesn't. The challenge is when you're starting in your career is that you don't know why. And that is what learning art principles and elements is going to help you resolve. So the first one is to get the information. Learn the principles. Learn the elements of what makes a good composition in an artwork because then you're going to be able to go and pull that work out and go I know why it's not working there's not enough tonal contrast or there's not enough use of line or it's all very in a gray scale you're going to be able to identify those the second way to move through that messy middle is to look for variety in your work now variety is the key that makes an effective composition. Variety is interesting, okay? It's like, you know, often in life, we marry the opposite of who we are, okay? We like that contrast, we like that difference. It it makes life interesting, right? When there is variety in your work, that draws the viewer in to physically look at your work for longer. Granted, it could be five or seven seconds, but it's more than one or two seconds, okay? Variety is attractive. It's what brings us alive. If you have the choice of looking at a beautiful artwork full of all these different tones and colors versus looking at a plain, one-tone, gray concrete wall, what would you choose? Now, we're artists. Of course, we're going to choose the nicer thing. But most people, you're always going to choose a variety. You're going to choose the colors, the differences, because it's interesting to look at. So the second thing you can do in your work is to look for variety. Now, there are many ways, you don't have to use these all, but these are some ways that you can incorporate visual variety or interest into your work. The first one is through the use of light. Okay, so you can have some very light areas, some very dark areas in your work. The second one is through your use of color. So whether that be working with a complementary color scheme, a monochromatic, having some dull colors with some pops of really light color. You could look at having variety through the use of scale. So I teach a lot of this inside the abstract florals course I do. But if you are doing, you know, say for instance, you're doing a floral work. If all the flowers are exactly the same size, that's a little bit boring. So play with that scale, have some small detailed flowers, have some big flowers in there. You could incorporate variety through the use of texture. So you could have some areas that are, you know, coming off the page. You could use gesso or impasto gel or some molding mediums to bring some areas forward. And then you could have some smooth areas where it's a lot more calmer. You could look at having the use of very gestural, or very loose lines. So it might be when you're starting off your work, there's a lot of energy, there's a lot of drips and movement going on. And then you might contrast that with having some areas that are blacked out or blocked out. You could create variety by using dark and light, like I mentioned before. Again, you could have small versus big, similar to the scale concept. You could look at variety through your brush strokes. So if you've got some very smooth detail pieces versus some very sort of gestural or some dotting type aggressive brush strokes going in there. There are so many different ways you can create variety. But what you don't want to do is create, for a better word, a vanilla artwork. Okay, vanilla is boring. There needs to be some sort of contrast, some sort of variety in there that's going to draw the viewer's eye in. So if you're looking at your work now and you're stuck, you're like, it's just boring, it's not happening. My first go-to would be, is there enough variety? 
contrast? Have you got a variety of tones? Have you got a variety of brush strokes? Start to create some interest in your work. The third way that we can move through that awkward, messy middle is to experiment with your work. Do not be afraid to try new things. Now, when we're in the passionate artist season or the trainee artist, and again, you can go grab the six seasons of the creative path and find out which one you're in. Sometimes we are in such a hurry to get to the next season. And what I mean by that is like, oh, we just want to master this painting thing. We just want to finish this painting. We want it, every painting to look good. It's like, you know what? I'm, I'm working really hard. I'm created 100 paintings. All 100 should be amazing. The truth is that's not going to happen. Okay, you are learning a new skill. Just like when you go and I don't know, what have I learned? Boxing, <laughs> for better words. When I was learning boxing, now I am a high achiever, A person. I don't like to not do well at something. Boxing is really, really hard. And so when my husband was teaching me the skills, I was like getting frustrated because I just wanted to like figure it out. I didn't want to look like I was a failure. But I had to take the time to learn those things. This wasn't natural to me. Okay, once I took that time, once I took that pressure off, and I was like, I'm just going to be a student. I'm going to learn. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to experiment. I'm going to try new things, like he said. Then my skills started to improve. It's exactly the same in your art career. Now, the reason sometimes I feel that we don't want to experiment is because we don't want our work to look bad. I mean, when we're new, you know, if people are watching us, we've got this passion, we're like, oh, we're going to be artists. Some of our friends, some of our family, they're not really into it, right? And they're just like, I just want to see your work really, really good. So we put this pressure on ourselves. But you need to take that pressure off. You need to look at your work as an experimentation. The best things that have ever happened in my art skills and my creative practice is through experimentation. When I have decided to be like, you know what, I'm going to take the pressure off completing a finished product that has to be perfect. I'm going to try something new. I'm going to experiment. That is when new creative paths started to open up for me. Your art journey will not be perfect, whether you're building an art business or whether you're focusing solely on building your creative practice in your studio. We're learning, we're growing, we're trying new things. Mistakes help us learn. And I said to this, and one of my students pulled this up the other day, creativity is magic. And some of the best times you're going to have in your studio is when you take that pressure off yourself of completing that work and you just have that fun. You just experiment. It is for this reason that over the last week, inside the Confident Brush, we have done a seven days of creativity. It was a very, very simple exercises, skills-based. There was no finished work that they needed to complete. So they were doing things like dry media mark making, wet media mark making, working with washes, we worked with pattern, we worked with doodling, we worked with still life and there was one other one that I can't remember at the moment but what I loved about that is that the amount of creativity that came through the students, the amount of energy, the amount of freedom and experimentation actually helped them move forward a lot faster in their creative path and find their style. Now I'm getting them to photograph all of those seven pieces and look at the connections in those works. Why? Because when I took the pressure off them of completing a work, I gave them an experiment, they were able to be freer and use what was naturally inside of them. So don't be afraid to experiment with your work. The fourth way to move through that awkward and messy middle is to be objective. So don't be so precious about your work. Now, granted, when you're starting, you're investing a lot in your art supplies and you're like, ah, oh, I don't want to waste this. But you know what? And I love what Nicholas Wilton from Art to Art says. He says, you're dating your work. You're not marrying it. 
why is it that when we create a work we sometimes we get too heavily invested straight straight away okay so it might be you know we start it when oh my gosh I love this color palette oh I love what's happening here and we fall in love too fast with our work and because we're so in love with it we're so connected to it what happens we pull back the thing that makes our artwork free is the thing that is when we've been expressive and creative and trying new things but we fell in love so then we put all these barriers and we play all these mind games about what we should and shouldn't be doing in our work. So step back from your work, okay? Just be like, you know what? I'm just dating you. If this work isn't working, if you make for better word a mistake, look at it as a learning experiment. Look at it as you are trying something new. You can put that work aside. You don't have to finish every work you create. Pop it aside, pop that date to the side and go date someone else. Start a new work. You're not committed, you're not married yet to that work, okay? Number five, and this is an absolute game changer to work through the messy middle. This is what saved me in my practice, was working in a series. Now, when I, back in oh, 2015, 16, I was painting beautiful, detailed, roses magnolias everything was perfect and tight and I was a very you know you do one task at a time so I paint one work and I would push and push and push through until it was finished and then I would start the next one then when I moved to Australia about three or four years ago I wanted to start getting more abstract and more loose and so I started to work on more than one piece at a time to stop myself overthinking and you know what? It opened up so much for me. Not only could I paint faster physically, but there's something to be said of when you're working on one piece. It's almost like a mind trick. Then you pull up another one. You look at it like a blank canvas and you release the pressure and you just go to town on that next piece. And so when we're working on more than one work at a time, yes, we can work faster. But you'll also discover that when you pull that new work up, you might discover how to solve that particular issue that you're having in the one that you're stuck in. The other thing with having multiple works in at one time, as if you, for better word again, make a mistake, you're like, that's cool, I've still got two, three, four, five bases in the same color palette that I can keep working on. Okay, so start to work in a series. Start to work in a series of at least three paintings at a time swap between one and the other and you're going to stop that little mind game that starts to overwork because when we're working on one at a time that's when the mistakes happen that's when we get to the messy middle that's when we overwork we get all that muddy stuff because we're just pushing and we're pushing and we're pushing multiple works multiple opportunities to experiment and to really grow in your creative practice the sixth way that you can move through that awkward, messy middle, and this is again what one of our students has said inside the Confident Brush. She said, I put my work in timeout, and I love that, and I've adapted that. Sometimes we put ourselves on schedules, we put our artwork on schedules, like it needs to be done by a certain time. And you know what? Sometimes it does. You know, if we've got commissions, we've got shows, yes, we have to push through. But you know what? Sometimes it's just, let's just put that work in time out. <laughs> let's put that work aside for the night and then come back and look at that work with fresh eyes in the morning. I've done this so many times and often when I've come back and looked at it, I've been like, oh yeah, I just need to put like, I need to darken that area or lighten that area. It's often it's just a tonal change or a few marks that need to be made. So put that work in time out before you start to make a mistake. Okay, to sum up how to move through that messy, awkward middle, number one, well, pre one, is common. Everyone struggles, everyone gets to that awkward, messy middle. This is an artist thing, okay? We're problem solvers, we're figuring creative problems out from a visual perspective. The more information you get, which is number one, 
the more art principles, the more elements you know, the more experience you have, the less often you will get stuck in that messy middle and you'll be able to solve that problem faster. The second thing you can do is go and look for variety. Variety is what makes your work sing. Number three is to experiment with your work. Try new things. That is where you're going to open up new creative ideas. Number four, be objective. All right, you are dating your work. You are not married. Do not fall in love. I know it's really easy. <laughs> I'm talking about artwork here and sometimes in life. But do not fall in love too quickly with your artwork. Number five, absolute game changer. If you've never tried it and you want to learn, come and join us in TCB. I have series on this on how to work in a series. And number six is to put that work in timeout. Leave it overnight and come and look at it with fresh eyes in the morning. Here's the thing. The more knowledge you have of art making principles and elements, the more you experiment with your work, the less stuck you're going to get in that messy middle. Okay, now it's still going to happen. It'll just happen less and you'll be able to solve the problem sooner. So what I've done to support you in your creative journey, I've put together a free artist creative guide. That's going to help you, and I mentioned earlier about this, this is going to help you identify which of the six creative seasons you are currently in. It's going to give you tips to be able to identify where you're at. It's going to show you what you should be focusing on. And it's going to show you the steps you need to take to move forward into that next season. I'll pop a link for it in the show notes below. You can go over, grab it for free. And once you've done it, it'll be really cool. Let me know which creative season you're in. Well, that is a wrap for today's episode. If you've loved this episode, would you do me a favor? Share it on IG and tag me in at Natalie Parker Studio. I love to connect over there and encourage you as you pursue your creative dream. I'll be back here next Monday for another fab episode that will, of course, inspire, encourage, and equip you to build the art business of your dreams. I'll see you then. Have a fab day.